Welcome back. In previous sessions, you've addressed the development of product features and the optimization of quality goals for those features. It's time to turn attention to the process by which those features will be created and those goals will be met. You have reached the step called develop process. The mission for this session is to develop a process for producing product features which meet the established quality goals. A process is a systematic series of actions directed to the achievement of a goal. To satisfy that definition, a process should be goal-oriented. You cannot plan in the abstract. You can plan only if you know the goal. A process should be systematic. The actions which make up a process are all interconnected and interdependent. They are also progressive. They follow a designated sequence. A process should be capable. The proper end result of the planning is a process which is capable of meeting the goals under operating conditions. A process should be legitimate. The process is evolved through authorized channels. It bears the approval of those to whom the associated responsibility has been delegated. Much of the literature on quality has used the word process in the special sense of a manufacturing process. Even more specifically, the word connoted the physical facilities of a manufacturing process. The machine tools, conveyors, instruments, computers, and so on. Our definition is generic. It applies to processes in all functions, non-manufacturing as well as manufacturing. It also includes the human forces as well as the physical facilities. Our definition of a process applies to processes of all sorts. Processes for launching new products, recruiting new employees, filling customers' orders, producing goods. Process development is a broad activity which provides the means for producing product features and meeting product goals. Specifically, process development consists of a series of steps somewhat as follows. First, review the goals for clarity and attainability. Next, define an economic process for conducting operations. Then, provide physical facilities capable of meeting the goals. Finally, provide methods, procedures, and cautions, the information required by the operating forces to conduct operations. The final result of process development consists of the information package and the hardware. The hardware consists of the physical facilities to be used by the operating forces. This sequence of activities is generic. It is applicable to business processes, manufacturing processes, service industries, and so on. A key requirement for any process is that it be capable of producing products which meet goals. This process capability can be evaluated through data collection and analysis. The resulting evaluation of capability becomes a valuable aid, both during quality planning and during subsequent conduct of operations. For example, there are data available which evaluate credit worthiness, the likelihood that debtors will be able and willing to pay what they owe. These evaluations, or credit ratings, can be regarded as measures of process capability. Such data are widely used as planning tools by credit managers, purchasing managers, financial managers, and so on. The widest application of the process capability concept has been to manufacturing processes. Many manufacturing processes make units of product for which quality is evaluated on a variables basis, length in millimeters, resistance in ohms. For such manufacturing processes, there has evolved a standardized method of evaluating process capability in terms of the inherent variability of the process. To illustrate this standardized method of evaluating process capability, 
Consider its application to a process which makes thin plastic film for wrapping food. Suppose that the objective is to discover the process capability with respect to the film thickness. Under operating conditions, the process is brought to a level of consistent operation known technically as a state of statistical control. Attaining this state of control often involves plenty of engineering work in itself, but that's another subject. Our subject is capability. When the process is in this state of control, a series of thickness measurements is taken. The unit of measure is the mill, one one thousandth of an inch. These measurements can be shown by simple statistical methods to be free of all but random variations. There are no spikes, no drift, no shifts, only the randomness which is the signature of a process in statistical control. All these readings, arranged in the form of a frequency histogram, show a pattern characteristic of this process. As is often the case with manufacturing processes, the pattern exhibits the characteristic bell shape of the so-called normal distribution. This normal distribution is completely described by two numbers, the mean, or average, which locates its center. Here, the mean is four and one-half tenths of a mil, and the standard deviation, designated by the lowercase Greek sigma, which is a measure of the spread or dispersion. In this process, sigma can be estimated from these data to be three hundredths of a mil. For a normal distribution, it can be shown that 99.7% of all the readings fall within the interval from three sigma below the mean to three sigma above the mean. It has become conventional in many industries to designate the width of that interval as the process capability. In this example, the value of six sigma, or simply the process capability, is 18 hundredths of a mil. In this process, quality was measured on a variable scale. Other processes involve products for which the quality is evaluated on an attributes basis. For example, the Internal Revenue Service provides telephone assistance to taxpayers. For each question asked by a taxpayer, the response may be categorized as correct or incorrect. A sample of calls is audited, and the response is categorized and tabulated. The process capability may be expressed as average percent of questions correctly answered. Process capability is usually evaluated through data collection and analysis under operating conditions. The term under operating conditions implies three things. The process is already in existence. Operations are being conducted under regular, not laboratory conditions. And the personnel conducting operations are the regular operating forces. Process capability for an existing process may be evaluated by collecting data on the features of the product turned out by the process, as in the case of the plastic film, or on the features of the process itself. This would be the case if we measured the capability of a hospital sterilization process by measuring the variability of the temperature in a sterilization vessel. The concept of process capability is much more than an interesting managerial curiosity. It is one of the most fundamental elements in quality planning. Planners usually have a range of choice among alternative processes. These alternatives differ from each other with respect to many parameters including quality. With adequate information on process capability, the planners can go beyond selecting a process which will hold a tolerance. The planners can select the best process from among competing processes. Note that the term process capability can be misleading in some respects. Process capability is different from process performance. Could do differs from does do. A manufacturing process which is easily able to hold tolerances may fail to do so because the input materials are substandard, or the process is set to aim at the wrong average, or the process is not receiving adequate maintenance, and so on. Process capability, when expressed in such terms as Six Sigma, tells a good deal about the inherent uniformity of the process. However, it does not tell whether the process is able to meet goals. 
you learn that only by comparing process capability with the goal. After all, the process doesn't know what the goal is. The goal isn't inherent in the process. It was chosen by a human being. Historically, evaluation of process capability was done by empirical means, rule of thumb, cut and try. In recent decades, a strong trend has developed to quantify process capability and to standardize the quantitative evaluation methods so that they can be used to express the capability of a wide variety of processes. The term process capability is now generally used as a name for some standard evaluation, such as the one used to evaluate the film manufacturing process. The required mathematical expressions vary depending on the nature of the process. Quantification of process capability requires added work in the form of data collection and analysis. However, organizations which have adopted such methods of quantification have significantly outperformed those which have not. To illustrate, in the U.S. automotive industry, manufacturing planning had for decades been carried out without quantifying the capability of manufacturing processes. As a result, many manufacturing processes were unable to hold the product design tolerances. The inherent variability of the processes was too great. The developers of those processes were intelligent, competent, experienced engineers. Their results were competitive because competing process developers did their quality planning in the same way. Then along came a new approach that outperformed them all. Quantification of process capability was part of that new approach. To stay competitive, planners in the American automobile industry had to adopt quantification as a quality planning tool. This they did under the banner of statistical process control. It is possible to extend the concept of Six Sigma to non-manufacturing processes, provided you are able to acquire adequate data. This has not been as widely used as in manufacturing. If your team applies the Six Sigma concept to your service operations, it is likely you will be breaking new ground. Where there is a standardized means of evaluating process capability, it becomes possible to organize and establish a process capability database. Once such a database has been prepared, process developers can use the information to predict the results of planned operations, to secure early warning of deficiencies, to choose from the best available alternatives, and to understand where to place key control points. Process capability databases are found in all company functions and outside the company as well. Product development has tables of properties of materials and lists of approved components which may be specified without further qualification testing. Purchasing has detailed records of on-time deliveries, quality of purchased goods, and the reliabilities of those goods. Sales has a database of creditworthiness of customers. Industrial engineering has work standards for tasks and operations. Ultimate users are a valuable source of inputs to process capability databases. Many products sold by manufacturers become processes in the hands of ultimate users. Examples of such products include office copiers, hand tools, computers. To users of such products, process capabilities may be expressed in positive terms, such as percent uptime, copies per minute, Alternatively, the expression may be in negative terms, percent downtime, mean number of copies between failures, failure rate, spare parts usage. Data in such terms obviously carry weight in the user's decisions about whose products to buy. Such data are also an important input to suppliers' databases. As a supplier, you should try to acquire such data.
A process is a systematic series of actions directed at the achievement of a goal. A process should be goal-oriented, systematic, capable, and legitimate. Process includes non-manufacturing as well as manufacturing activities, human forces as well as physical facilities. The aim of process development is to provide the operating forces with a means for meeting operating goals. The final result of process development consists of the information package or process description, the hardware or physical facilities, and the instructions for use. All processes have an inherent capability for performance. The trend in measuring process capability is to standardize the quantitative evaluation methods. The process capability concept applies to non-manufacturing processes as well as to manufacturing processes. Processes can be developed without evaluation of process capability, but they cannot consistently compete with processes which are developed through evaluation of process capability. Process capability is most usually evaluated from operating data. Process performance is often below inherent process capability due to the influence of extraneous causes. Quantification of process capability serves multiple purposes. Evaluating ability to meet tolerances, judging relative merits of alternative processes, communicating needs to suppliers of processes. Process capability databases can be compiled for various processes. Such databases can be of great value to planners. In the next session, you will continue your work in process development. The focus will be on process design. I'll see you then.